Hello, so this is just a quick video to show you how to fix the scrolling issue on some Logitech mice. This one is the G703, but I've heard that there's issues on other models and probably the fix will be roughly the same for all other models. So what you have to do is, you firstly need to take apart your mouse. That usually means removing the feet because the screws are hidden underneath those feet. Once you remove the feet, uh, they are basically done. You can throw those feet away and you'll have to order new ones. They are not difficult to get on eBay. Pretty cheap, probably $10 for two. So that's good. Anyways, you remove the screws. Also, don't break anything when you remove the case. In this model, bear in mind, well, it's not focusing. There we go. Bear in mind that those clips make it quite difficult to remove it. Once that happens, you can remove it nicely, once you've unclipped it. Um, this is not what it looks like. Usually there'll be a battery, you remove the battery, be very careful with that connector, it's not strong. You can pull on the wires, but pull very gently, side to side, to slowly pull it out. Once that's been removed, you'll basically see this. All right, so the issue for the scrolling issue is this encoder here. Um, so I originally thought maybe um, I could fix this uh, in um, a way of not buying any new components and stuff. So I put an oscilloscope on these three contacts. Uh, the one was ground and the other two are the signals. And what I found was um, a lot of electrostatic. Um, so some of you that do not understand what that means, uh, for instance, if you've ever had an old radio and the volume controller gets dirty and when you change the volume, the, the volume crackles a lot. That's because the contact is not nice as you move it. Well, not nice, pardon me, that's, uh, it's not um, well defined. So when you move it, the resistance spikes a lot. Here it's not really resistance, it's more like a contact, but those contacts aren't that good. And uh, I think I have a photo which I'll put in front of this video about the static that you see. Anyways, that static um, affects the chip and then that's why you get the scrolling issue of when you scroll down, you'll get a scroll up and four scrolls down or something like that. Um, so it seems like the supplier that Logitech used for these rotary encoders um, sort of sold them a bad batch because I've had two, my friend gave them to me to fix, um, and he bought this one, he emailed Logitech, Logitech, and then they were like, no problem, we'll just send you another one for free. So they sent him this one for free, and then it had the exact same issue. So then he asked them for another mouse, and he got another model, and the issue is now gone. Um, so I think, um, yeah, it's this uh, manufacturer of this rotary encoder, um, I think it's called Kali or something, um, oh no, 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 Keith, Keith or Kelly, whatever. So, um, once you identify that potentiometer, you can go onto the internet, usually eBay, could be Banggood, Alibaba, whatever, and you need to buy yourself a new rotary encoder. Do not buy the same make. Um, there's another brand, pardon me, I can't remember the name of it, but anyways, it's yellow. You can identify it by the yellowness. This one is a 9mm um, diameter hole in there. So that scroll wheel, when it moves in there, that's 9mm. So you just buy the same one. Obviously, look at the photos to see they match. Um, mine looked like they match, so I bought this one. Anyways, so your next step is to remove this. You do not need to remove this button. Okay. Bear in mind that this is over that when you open it initially. So remove this carefully. Then unscrew the two black screws you see there. And now the rotary encoder should just come off. There you go, it lifts up. And then you can pull it out. There you go, you see? And now the wheel should come out too. Put the wheel to the one side. And now you can see the rotary encoder. This will also help you identify if you're buying the right one off eBay. Okay, so from now what you need to do is, is you need to remove this flex cable. Um, 
bear in mind that when you solder this, this flex cable will be um, will melt pretty fast. It's it's sort of cheap insulated wire there, and the melting point is super low. So begin with removing those three wires from this board. So now I've removed the connector. It's pretty simple to remove it. You just put some flux on those three connectors. You take the iron, you feed it with some solder, you melt it a bit, and then you slowly put it away. If you know how to solder, it will be simple. If you don't know how to solder, um, you're just simply good luck. You just need to learn how to fail, and then you'll learn how to do it correctly. Okay, so now you will leave this behind. All the attention is going to go to this small board now. Now what you need to do is you need to remove this thing from the PCB. All right, so... Okay, if we look at the new one, you can see that these two ones bend out like a clip. When you put this one, or when you put the new one on this PCB, it will clip into it. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you that if you desolder all of this, this encoder will not simply fall out. You need to pull it out. So, what I'm going to tell you here is not really the best advice, but you should just cut that encoder you should get rid of this encoder completely don't worry about saving it it's a piece of shit straight from the factory i hope someone at logitech fires the supplier of this because obviously this encoder is shit and i wonder how much money logitech lost just because of this fucking thing and okay so you can either put flux here remove it with desoldering wick each one of those which you will have to do to make the holes free but you should first cut these two large connectors on the side be careful not to damage the pcb because there is some tracks there pardon me if the video quality changed i had to switch over to my ipad okay so these are the big pliers i use to cut off the encoder wow totally different all right so there's the encoder that i broke off i just cut it on the side like you can see over here oh my god it's not focusing there you go you see i just cut it off be careful not to put too much mechanical stress on the pcb if you break this pcb your mouse is fucked okay so that's done and you can throw this away this not the pcb okay so now what you're going to do is, is you're going to desolder all of those get rid of these small ones first and then work on the big ones last all right so before you solder it it's best to get something to hold it i know these things suck but they do help in some way okay here's my flux you're going to inject some flux onto these small ones then you're going to get your solder ready and your iron and you're going to go one by one and you're just going to let these fall out these ones fall out these big ones will not fall out all right here you can see my iron there that just fell out over there and there it's nice and clean you can see the flux is still there see check it out all right remember do not put too much heat on this board okay so now we need to look at those let's see if it will just take remember it takes some time for it to heat up there you go does it fall out let's see go from the bottom oh there you go it fell out nice let's do the next one let it fall out. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Got it from the bottom. And it came out. That's fantastic. All right. So that's how you do it. If you did not break the rotary encoder and you try to remove these legs with the rotary encoder still attached, it's a high level mission and you'll just damage the board. Just cut the rotary encoder with the large sets of pliers. Do not damage the board when you cut that rotary encoder and then you're just left with the pins that will fall out nicely if you put enough flux and solder. Alright. Remember, too much flux is not bad. It's the heat that kills everything. So now what I'll do is, is I'll put more flux there and I'll get some desoldering wick. Here is some shitty pro kit solder desoldering wick and I'll open those holes up so I can fit the new rotary encoder in. Okay, so now I've removed all the solder. If it decides to focus, you can see. There you go. You see those holes are perfectly open. No bullshit is going to prevent the new one from going in. And there is the used solder. You see, look. Look how it sucked up all that solder. Getting this technique is not easy and you really just have to fail and learn 
how not to do it and you will eventually learn how to do it. Remember flux, solder and also uh, for instance if you're going to remove it like this it won't work. You need to unwind the spool quite a bit like that. So it will basically look like that when you have it w when it's full on copper. And then you'll start there and you'll pull back slowly. And as you pull back slowly it will absorb more and more solder and then hopefully when you're done all the solder will be gone and will be stuck on that and you'll be left with something beautiful like this. Okay, so now the next step is to put the new rotary encoder on. Alright, I just also forgot to mention you should also clean up these three holes because you'll be putting new wires on them. Also, ensure that you have some contact cleaner for the PCB. It usually comes with a nice brush where you can just spray and scrub it off and then the PCB removes all that flux that you put on there. So now it's nice and clean and green. And now we can begin to put the new rotary encoder on, which is over here. All right. So as I said earlier, I'm going to try to do this with my other hand. Um, no, fuck it. I'll do it with this hand. Anyways, you see how those three small pins line up perfectly but the two pins or the two larger pins on the left and right hand side are like clips that just again enforces what I said about just breaking the old rotary encoder instead of desoldering trying to remove it nicely it won't work out nicely simply because these things act as clips and will hold it in and trying to remove that with solder is difficult there's the new rotary encoder and it fits perfectly. Nice and smooth, nothing special required other than those holes being perfectly clean. Now you can put it back on the crocodile clips and solder them together. Now you will just solder three new wires to these connectors. Um, ensure that they're different colors just so you don't mix up the connections when you solder it to the other board. So here are the new wires I will use, and here's the board. Um, just make ground black. Um, A can be either color, just keep ground black, because that's always just good to do. All right, and that's what it looks like when the new wires have been installed. So now you just gotta measure how long they should be. Um, they really should not be that long. And how do you do that? Well, now this is where you get the other part of the mouse back. Here we go. And they should basically be the same length this is of this black wire that you'll be removing. So just make a, nice, a little uh, eye measurement there and then cut the wires. So there you go, I've made the connection. Those still might be a bit too long, not made the connection, I've cut the wires to length. So now the next thing is we should remove this main PCB to desolder this wire that we'll be taking out here. Um, okay, so by removing it, um, take out this connector very carefully and slowly. You do not have to remove these screws. Remove those screws. Actually, remove all the screws at the top except for these two. Also, remove this black thing. Also, remove this. The entire board needs to come out. Okay, so then the board comes out nicely once you've removed all the screws. Bear in mind that the switch stays connected to the PCB. Just put this switch back into that hole where it came from. Okay, so considering you have not messed anything else up, you should be good to go on this board. Um, you need to just remove this wire, so put some flux there, then take the iron with some solder, get that flowing, and then use the soldering wick to remove it. Or actually just warm up all that solder at once and let this thing fall out and then clean up the holes. Be careful not to mess with the antenna, but just in general, do not fuck up anything on this board. I should just correct myself. These three holes are quite hard to get the solder sucked up from with the desoldering wick. What I recommend is just stripping those wires and then inserting, what, inserting each wire in one by one while warming it up. So basically you keep the wire there, you warm the solder up and then push it through. It's quite a tricky maneuver since you have to do it three times, but it'll be easier than trying to get that solder out. Possibly my iron is not hot enough to get the solder flowing because this is next to quite a large ground plane and this plane here is sucking up all the heat. It's best not to put too much heat on this board, just in general. Just another note about the wiring scheme, it's pretty simple, but just in case someone is confused, you will see there a triangle with an A 
that triangle with an A will connect to the triangle with the A over there, or just a triangle, sorry, just a triangle, and then the wires will just follow each other. So it'll be white, and then what was it, blue and black. Yep, exactly. Or just remember how the connection is, it's really not difficult. All right, so there is the new encoder PCB as well, installed onto the main PCB. Now reinstall this board onto the actual mouse enclosure. So there it is. Um, the new encoder with the new wires I installed. Um, yeah, everything's good. Uh, be careful with this connector. Also, I forgot to mention when removing the actual top of the mouse, uh, remember that there's a flex cable that connects to this. Do not rip that out because that's also um, it will just not end well. Okay, so now I'll put the scroll wheel back and then tighten this board down. All right, so there's the new wheel. Well, not the new wheel, the old wheel, but with the new encoder installed. Screws tightly down, not too tight, do not strip them. And then, there we go. It even feels nicer than the new one, uh, than the previous ones. Um, it's a little bit louder, so when you scroll, you actually hear a krr, krr. But um, whatever, at least this one works instead of the piece of shit that the factory provided. Um, and yeah, that works as well. So now install the battery, connect the battery, screw down the battery, and also put the cover over the wheel. Okay, so there's the mouse. Um, there you can see it's working, let's scroll for the first time, and look at that, that's a perfect scroll right there, no bullshit going up, just going down, okay let's go up, oh yeah, scrolling exactly the way it should be doing. Alright, also before you actually seal the mouse itself, um, just ensure that all these buttons work, uh, just to ensure that that, um, that flex cable, that blue flex cable there is connected correctly. Okay, so now that the mouse is back together and we have um, we've declared that it is working correctly, we now need to stick the new pads onto this onto the bottom of this mouse. So what you first should do is clean it up. Uh, you can see there's an adhesive from the previous pads that we threw away. Um, so you can use some label off, or you can just go straight to IPA. But um, I would use both. Um, I do this one first to get the sticky residue off, and then this one just to make it like perfectly clean. So now that I've removed all the glue from there, it looks pretty clean. I can now put the new stickers on. So the stickers I bought from this company, I don't even know what company this was. I just found it on eBay, and then it came like this. Um, I will obviously just put the link in the description there they are just for shows all right and there are the new pads and a mouse that works correctly now thanks logitech for selling broken fucking mice anyways pretty good run smooth i think you can peel off like the, another layer down there um but whatever so there's one, there's another one, and there's my super old Logitech mouse. This is my favorite, but I think I'll stop using it now since it's... Yeah, bro, this thing has seen life. And I hope this helps somebody fix theirs or another Logitech mouse. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.